Good evening, mathematicians. Tonight we are going to review how to multiply large numbers. So if we take a look over here, we have 88 times 3. And if we were going to do this problem out, we know we want to start with multiplying the ones digit times the ones digit. So here we have 8 ones times 3 ones. 8 times 3 is 24. We put the ones the four ones in the ones place, and we're going to put the two tens in the tens column. So now when we do eight ones times, I'm sorry, three ones times eight tens, three times four is 24. We're going to add two, and we get 26. So now we actually have 264 because we multiplied 88 times three, 8 times 3 was 24. We carried the 2. 8 times 3 was 24 again, but we had to add that 2 up above, so it actually made it 264. Now if we take a look over here on the right, 278 times 5, we need to do 8 times 5 first. 8 times 5 is 40. We put the 0 in the 1's place. We put the 4 in the 10's place. Now we need to do 5 times 7. So 5 times 7 is 35 plus the 4 from before is 39. We put the three up here in the hundreds place. Now we have to do five times two. We keep moving out a place value place. Five times two is 10 plus three is 13. Don't forget the comma. 1,390 would be our final answer when we multiply 278 times five. So now it's your turn. Please multiply 53 times eight on a piece of paper with your name. Make sure you follow the steps and record your answer. All right, there's another way that we could multiply and we call this partial products. So here what we have is 300, the 639 times five. And what we end up doing is we end up separating each digit according to its place value and multiplying that times five. So first we had five times nine, so that was 45 here. Then we did three times five, but it's not really three, it's actually 30 because it's in the tens place. 30 times 5 is 150, because remember the trick, cross out the 0. 5 times 3 is 15, then add the 0 back in. And then last but not least, we did 6 times 5, but it's not really 6. It's in the hundreds place, so it's 600 times 5. And 600 times 5, we'll cross out the zeros and we'll add them back in. 6 times 5 is 30, then we need to add two more zeros back in. What we do is once we have all these partial products, we add them together, make sure they're lined up, and we get 3,195. So I'm going to give you guys another problem that I'd like you for you to try out using the partial product strategy. Let's do 715 times 4. And I'd like for you to try out the partial product strategy where you separate each digit according to its place value and you multiply that times 4. Try this one at home and bring it in on the same piece of paper as your last problem. All right, and last but not least, we have the standard algorithm for multiplying a two-digit number times a two-digit number. So here we have 68 times 26. What we did first was we multiplied 8 times 6, which is 48. We carried the 4. 6 times 6 is 36 plus 4 is 40, so we added that here. And now when we got into our next digit, 2, we had to make sure to put the 0 in the 1's place because we're now in the tens place. So that means 2 times 8 was 16. We put the 6 down here. Cross out the 4. We add the 1 because we don't need that 4 anymore. That was from before. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1 was 13. Now we add these all up. We get 1,768 and here's the comma. So I'm going to give you guys one to try at home. Let's try 29 times 36. And I'd love for you to try it using the algorithm we just practiced on your piece of paper that you were using before. All right, so moving into area and perimeter is really important because when we are solving area, we will actually need to multiply two numbers together. That's why we just reviewed it. Perimeter, we're not going to be multiplying. We're actually going to be adding the length and the length plus the width and the width. I love to think about it like this because for me, area is like the grass that covers, if you like to think about it that way, the area is the amount of space that covers something. So you think about it like grass and perimeter is like a fence. I love this picture. It helps me visualize area and perimeter. And here we have another visual that we could use. 
perimeter we're seeing is around, around, around. An area is taking up all the space of the boxes. So think perimeter fence, area grass. And here we have another great representation. So we know that the area is the length. Area is equal to the length times the width. So here in this square, the area is equal to four centimeters times four centimeters, because that's our length and our width, which we know can be written as four squared, which we know is equal to 16 centimeters. And we have to remember that for area, it's centimeters squared, because we multiply cm times cm, which is cm squared, centimeters squared. The way that we could prove that with a picture is actually to count up how many squares we're covering this area. And I'll use green to remember of the graph. So here's one squared centimeter, two squared centimeters, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 square centimeters are covering this square, which is the area, 16 centimeters squared. And here we have a few other examples. So here we had 12 centimeters for our length. And we know that the area is equal to 96 centimeters squared. Ooh, so this has a problem solving backwards. So 96 centimeters squared, we know that area is the length times the width. So here we know that the length is 12. The width is S. They're giving us a letter. What do we think it is? It's 12 centimeters. Something times 12 got us to 96. 12 times 10, that's too high. That would be 120. I think it's going to be 12 times 8 centimeters. So S is really 8 centimeters. That was our missing length. Um, and here we have a length of 5 and a width of 2. So we know that area is length times width. So it's 5 centimeters times 2 centimeters. And we end up with our area being 10 centimeters squared. And last but not least, this big yellow one over here, our area is equal to our length times our width. So we have eight centimeters for our length times four centimeters for our width. So our area is 32 elephants? No, centimeters squared. Good luck with your multiplication and remember you'll need it for finding the area.